know what discipline is going to be. Do we really understand? Do we really know what discipline is going to be? Google still says. There are so many interpretations and uh, people view disability in different ways and that's where we find ourselves uh, in crossroads or in intersections. And what I always think to myself is that we can empower women through diversity and they are sexually different differences, they are class, they are race, and their disabilities always puts them at a disadvantage. But we need to go over that and find the interconnection of how women really connect, how women have that resilience Google, that you've just spoken about, how women can become innovative, how women use their determination to get to where they want to get to. So what is intersectionality? Intersectionality is where the connection comes in. The connection of this uh, verb. If you can go to slide, I think it's slide five. Uh, if you can, yeah. That, that, that's how everything interacts. You know, there's sexuality, there's disability, there's nationality, there's gender, there's race and class. But all these things come to a crossroad. And that is where we have to say as women, how can we? How can we get out of it? How do we get out of it? And then there's a second layer where there's intersectionality with women, disability, and business. When someone <laughs> comes a, 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 in a wheelchair, a bank, as of whom you know, the first thing they, they look at, they, do, they don't look at the person, they look at the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And the wheelchair dictates to them Uguti, she can't pay the loan back. So she comes in, in a wheelchair, she wants to buy a business, but the attitude of the person on the other side tells the different story. So women find themselves in compounding challenges. The challenges are compounded because they find, they find themselves having to fight their sexuality, their gender. It, it, it's just, it, 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 it's, it's a pedal all the time because this woman wants to get there. This woman wants to do this. this woman, but the sexuality is pulling her around is pushing her around. But thanks to the agenda of 2030, or even to the SDGs that are saying if poverty has to be eradicated, we have to end poverty. And the agenda has prioritized disability, have prioritized marginalized groups, have prioritized women. And this is what we have to talk about. This is the conversations, these are the conversations we need to have. Obviously, if women with disabilities 
are now considered and if we have to end the poverty that we are seeing and witnessing around us and everywhere what then but then there are target areas there are some target areas education for people with disabilities we need schools that are inclusive and universities so <laughs> comes to this podium I think one of the lecture theaters Google, uh, in psychology department, it had no access as well. So, you, for anyone in a wheelchair, can't get to the to the lecture theatre. So these are the things. Yes, you are accessing education, but there is something that you can't access. There are lecture theatres that you can't get to because of you are differently abled. But then, how about somebody who can't see? <clears throat> I met a student in UK that then she was totally blind. Uh, her name, she has never seen a computer, right? She doesn't know when you talk about a computer, and then you are telling her to type her assignment. What is she going to do? I was blessed to have an opportunity. I will tell you later on how I had interest. But I would take her to a land that was meant for the blind and partially sighted students and sit with her. This I is teaching her, with, this is what is called a keyboard. You can't see it, but you can feel it. Today she's a teacher. So you, you, you look at that, there is a disability unit, mind you. But because the person at the disability unit doesn't understand visually, She doesn't really know. Gashi, gashi. All she knows is that she's a coordinator. When I got to the university, there was not even a coordinator at the time. There was just somebody who was just helping. So they don't even know what to do and when to do it. And then, comes to the agenda and then what are the priority, primary factors to consider equal employment empowerment and upskilling sexual violence because women with disabilities they experience sexual violence more than able women women with disabilities are unemployable and they run a risk of being illiterate, some of them. And they are poorer than their men counterparts. And then again, it comes to this question, how is reasonable accommodation because we speak of reasonable accommodation but do we really understand what reasonable accommodation is and if there is that woman who aspires to them who aspires to get into business but she doesn't know what to do she doesn't know where to start so that's when we need a working ecosystem where we are going to say, government, here we are. What are the policies 
what are the inclusive policies and people must access them and then that's when we need the NGOs who are going to come out there and go out there and empower people and give people knowledge and bring awareness to communities <coughs> and sometimes other provinces are doing better than others I had an opportunity to go and study in the Western Cape and uh, I got to UCT and then the Graduate School of Business where I, I literally met a student who was not born blind but had lost her vision and uh, we shared quite a, a few things and she is today when we speak about resilience she is today a doctor she has a PhD wow. and uh, she <laughs> there was one story that happened because because she was blind and there was another guy who was also blind but working at the university but they they need to ride the same train and they both used guide dogs right so there is a, a vehicle that takes them to the station from the university so they're getting out this one takes the other one's dog this one takes the other one's dog <laughs> They don't know. And zoop, the train leaves. This one, this guy gets off the train first with this dog. This dog doesn't know where to go. The lady is left with the dog in the train. Who, who doesn't want to get out of the train? Because he is lost. It was a mission. Fortunately, they both thought of phoning the driver and letting him know that here I'm stuck in the station with a dog that doesn't want to move. So it means I took Brian's dog. Mm -hmm. But that, <laughs> you know what, that was difficult, but that was an experience that this drive, because the dogs were so similar. You know, it, there's a certain breed of dogs that is used to become guide dogs. The second one, there is a lady in Peter Mary Spectrum now, has a PhD as well, she was born blind. She owns a blind school today. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's married to a blind guy as well. They met at UKZN, and uh, they have a daughter now who is almost a teenager now, about 20, mm -hmm. and fully sighted. So, Another one, I'm just thinking of what I watched ooh, ooh, goo, goo, because she came to Varsity when I was in UK that in Israel. I would watch her husband wheeling her to every lecture theatre. And I would feel sorry for this man. I would really, I, I didn't know why. But, and even to exams, she, he would be there. You, you know, he, he was just there. And that to me, what, what was so, so touching. The last resilience I would like to share is with this woman who was medically boarded at 35 from her profession. I lost my sight. I'm visually impaired. I didn't know what to do. I had a 10 year old and there was a stepdaughter who was about 15 at the time and there were still siblings that I needed to take care of. So I had to pivot. Fortunately for me, I would say fortunately, 
I had a very good policy, which had a good disability cover, which allowed me to buy a franchise. So I was the first woman in KwaZulu Natal who owned a bakery in 1999. Mm -hmm. wow. And uh, I owned the bakery for nine years in Google's hometown, Newcastle. And then because of my visual impairment, Abanye are going to ask, how are you visually impaired? I'm, only, I'm actually print handicapped. When it comes to print, I can't read. And if you meet me in town and greet me and I don't recognize your face, when you start to pull me aside and say, I'm going to then I'll know it's you. So, this is what happened to me. And then, because of that, and again, I'm not against Amma Bank. Amma Bank, they really like you when you're doing well. And they give you this credit card, this and that and that. And Umbali Law, has not been trained financially to be financially savvy and understand how to run this business, how to run this credit card, your business. Umbali, when she needs a check, why can she still take this credit card as a bakery and go and swipe and buy the check? So, these are the things we need to learn. And unfortunately, my equipment got stolen by a technician and then I was shut down. That's how my business went down. I was shut down by the bank because my business had grown, so I had taken more debt and I was owing and then we had this mishap with ESCOM and everything else and then my equipment was damaged and then the technician came, took my equipment, I never saw his face and everything else. So I lost that. And then the bank closed me down. Shut everything. I lost it all. Mm -hmm. Everything. From the house to the car to, to the business to everything. And then this is when it came to me. And I said, okay, I need to, I need to empower other women. So I went and studied. I then did BCom in small business development because I wanted to empower women, especially women with disabilities, and say, listen, it can be done, but don't do it that way, do it this way. Because I did it this way, it didn't really work. Long and short of it, I have proceed progressed academically to the point where I am and I had to change again, I had to pivot again to nutrition because I learned that I fell sick actually and then I learned that food could heal me and then I started using food to heal myself and then I went and studied nutrition. So. I had become a nutritionist now, in a process of getting a wellness center set up. And then we are saying, women, we are here. Take care of your health. Take care of whatever resource you have. If you don't have resources, ask. Ukomoto said we need to stand on the shoulders. We are here. I'm not young. I think everyone can see that. So with everything that I have learned navigating the life, I can share one or two <coughs> things. But more than any other thing, big business, we're asking you. Young people, we're asking you. Colleagues, prof, we're asking you that let's take disability 
women and business to the next level. Mm. Oh, thank you. Mm. Um, I want to perform.